What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna talk about a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade for the month of March in 2019 and here towards the end of February and 2019 as well. So for everybody out there that's new to this channel, my name is Stas and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for everybody that wants to learn more about that, feel free to subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. And if you find value in this video you're watching right now, feel free to hit that like button as well. It really does help the channel grow and I do appreciate every single one of you guys out there supporting the channel, subscribing to the channel, and of course, liking and just watching the videos here on the channel. So let Let's just hop right into the topic of today's video. Like I said, we're going to be talking about 10 to 15 stocks that I see potential in and also a couple that you guys ended up talking about and shouting out to me in the Discord group chat as well as on Instagram, guys. So without further ado, let's talk about, you know, what I personally see potential in and some that you guys ended up calling out to me today. So the first one we're going to be talking about here today is Square, ticker symbol S. Q. So SQ guys is in a very interesting spot right now. And we can talk about this in a couple of different ways, right? We can see that we are holding this previous resistance here on Square SQ at around $74 very successfully, right? We can see, obviously, the markets have been doing absolutely amazing since the beginning of 2019. There's really no need to go into that because I'm sure if you're watching this video right now, you know that we took a big dip from October to December, of course, towards the end of December, and then we started to climb up from there. The SPX is up around 17%, something like that in the year of 2019. The Dow's up around 15, 16%, and the NASDAQ's up around that same ballpark category as well. And obviously, the fact that all the major indices are up, that means a lot of these stocks that we're going to be talking about are also up and doing very well in the month of 2019. And Square is pretty much doing very well, right? We can see it bottomed off here, double bottom at $50. We broke above the 50 SMA resistance, the 180 SMA resistance. We're seeing the 50 SMA cross above the 180 SMA, which is a very, very bullish sign. Could indicate more green to come, which obviously we can see is true because once we did cross above here, the bullish move, the stock has shot up from about $65 all the way up to where it is right now. And what I want to talk to you guys about in terms of square right now guys is this resistance that we are currently at where we got rejected a couple of days back which is at around 77 to 76 dollars and this previous resistance from the uh, towards the end of november where we topped off at around 74 dollars so Take a look at this channel, guys. If we're successfully holding this old resistance as a new support, which it does seem like we're doing, we could end up filling that gap back up to this previous resistance at around $77, $78, where we had difficulty getting above it about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, and also in the beginning, or more towards the end, rather, of January of 2019. So this could end up being a very good play, especially since we're holding above the 50 SMA very nice. It's looking like we're continuing this uptrend pattern of higher highs. And at the point we are right now, guys, let's say we do push up again tomorrow. The overall markets are green. Square could definitely close the gap from 76 278 offering about a 2% margin of profit. And take a look and keep an eye rather on on this resistance here, guys, on Square, if we do end up breaking out of it, which is about a 2% move to the upside from where we are right now, this could be a breakout move, meaning we could push up into the $80 range, maybe $85 range over these next couple of weeks in terms of this particular stock, right? So that is a pretty good call out in my personal opinion. Uh, I believe one of our members from the Instagram page called this one out as well as on the Discord chat. And just keep a look on it, guys. Keep a look on it. If we do break that 80 resistance or rather the $78 resistance, the next spot's gonna be around $80. The next one after that's gonna be around $83. So keep an eye, this one could be your runner if we do break this $78 
$50 resistance here. So another one that a lot of people wanted me to talk about, and I'm personally watching this one as well, is Cron, ticker symbol C-R-O-N. And for, for those of you guys that know marijuana stocks, you're pretty educated, or not really educated, you know a brief understanding of a couple marijuana stocks, you probably know Cron, right? Cron, Kronos Group, one of the probably most hyped stocks out there in the marijuana space. This one doubled in price in 2019 from $10 all the way up to about $25. Not only did it double, guys, it almost tripled in price in the matter of two months. And we saw the big pullback it took from $25 down to about $19, where we ended up holding this previous resistance at around $19 from this time at about the end of January as a new support. Very good sign that we're continuing the uptrend. We see the break above the 50 SMA here on the 184-hour chart, the break above the EMA, and now we're seeing a very interesting move in uh, Chrono stock here. We can see the top at $23 roughly this past week, and now we're seeing a pullback down to around the mid $21 range. We topped or bottomed off rather at around $21, and we ended up closing the day on Friday on this little upswing, right? We can see the massive sell-off of about, this is probably like 7%, right? About 7% from $23 down to around $21. And we're closing the day, not only on consolidation, but on some upswing to the upside, right? That's a very good sign that we're holding a new support on a longer term chart, which in this case, guys, we are holding a new support at this 50 SMA level, where if we do successfully hold this, that's going to be the continuation of the uptrend that we want to see at this new higher low point, which is a previous or, uh, you know, higher low from the previous low at around $20.80 right around here, right? So if we do end up holding this, guys, that's going to be a very good sign. And what I'm personally looking for in terms of cron, guys, is for us to do exactly that, right? Hold this new trend line here. Hold this new support on the 50 SMA on the 20-day chart, and then slowly push back and climb back into the $22 range before considering a trade in Kron. So if we take a look closer here on the 20 day one hour, we can see the uptrend a little bit clearer, right? We can see the higher highs, higher lows. This pullback is maintaining a higher low from the previous, and it's really just continuing the uptrend, right? So I'm going to set an alert on Kron at about $22. Let's create this alert very quickly $22 and let's say 15 cents. Because if we do break that level, guys, Mark is at or above 22.15, we can slowly fill the gap back up to $23 and potentially test higher highs and maybe even test that $25 high that we got back here in the beginning of February in 2019. So Kron, I'm watching very closely. It's looking very, very attractive um, in my personal opinion. So another one I'm watching is Microsoft, ticker symbol MSFT. For those of you guys that have been paying attention to the channel, this is one that I swing traded last week for around a 2% profit. I ended up selling off on Thursday at this top here, at this high Higher high. I took my profits of 2% to be safe. The next day, we can clearly see I missed out on about 1-2%. We pushed up to the top of this channel here at about $111. And now why I'm watching Microsoft, guys, is I want to see... Are we going to end up breaking out of this, you know, resistance of this channel and potentially break up to 113, which would be, or rather 112, 113-ish, which would be the next resistance, or, which is honestly the more likely thing that I think is going to happen, or are we going to pull back here to open up another good opportunity towards the bottom of this channel, maybe at around 107, 108, for a potential swing entry position back to the top of this channel, which would be at that point around 111, 112. So Microsoft, very, very attractive right now, guys. If we do break this resistance, that could run up to 113. If we pull back, which I think is likely, that's going to open up a nice swing opportunity in Microsoft MSFT. So another one I wanted to talk about today was ticker symbol MO, and this is Altria Group. And Altria Group is actually a tobacco company that took stake in one of the biggest marijuana companies that we actually just talked about, which was Kronos, guys, ticker symbol C-R-O-N. And M-O, guys, Altria, this is another stock that got beat pretty badly 
in, you know, the latter half of 2018. We can see from $66 it dropped all the way down to about, you know, $42, which is actually more into 2019 as well. I didn't realize that. This is more towards the end of January where we found our bottom here at $42. And now, guys, we're seeing a reversal pattern here that's pretty attractive, right? This is a very attractive pattern. And let me explain what I'm seeing here. I'm sure you guys can see it as well, just judging off this chart. We can see the bottom here, very good sign. We can see that we popped out of this, this is kind of an inverse, uh, you know, head and shoulders here, right? The head, the two shoulders, and now we're reversing to the upside. We popped out of that 180 SMA, we popped out of that 50 SMA and that EMA, and now we're trading above all of those old resistances, meaning the old resistances here were the 50 SMA, the EMA, and the 180 SMA, and now we're trading above all of those, and we're also seeing a 50 SMA cross to the upside above the 180 SMA, which we all know by now is a very bullish sign we're seeing the bounce here on this 50 SMA and the push up to the higher high, which is a start and the continuation of an uptrend, another very good sign. And we can see the break of the resistance at around $50. So we can see, guys, over these past 20, 30 days here in Altria stock, there was consolidation from around $48 to $50 for the matter of like two, three trading weeks, right? We can see that here very clearly. And the fact that we pushed up, we got out of that resistance, that's a good sign that we're continuing the push up the uptrend and the slow gap fill from this massive drop that we saw you know really more, more towards the uh, beginning of November to the end of uh, January here in 2019 so Altria I'm watching it very closely would like to see a pullback before entering but I do see good potential in this one as a swing trade so another one I want to talk about this was highly highly uh, suggested and in the discord chat was UWT and we know by now UWT UWT is a crude oil ETF that trades based upon crude oil, right? Whenever crude oil is going up in price, UWT is going up in price as well. And if we take a look over here to the price of crude oil, we all know crude oil hit very lows here at about $42. This is one of the biggest drops in years in terms of crude oil from $77 down to about $42. And from there, we're seeing all the reversal patterns to the upside that we like to see, right? The, the bottom, the break above the 50 SMA, the 180 SMA, the 50 SMA crossing the 180 SMA shows bullish tendencies, right? We're seeing higher highs, higher lows, all that jazz that we like to see in terms of, you know, investing in stocks, ETFs, indices, whatever we like, to, you know, invest in, right? And this is very attractive. And the fact that we broke this old resistance at around $55, we're trending in the $57 range right now. What I would love to see in terms of crude oil is a pullback and a hold above this old resistance at $55 as a new support, guys. And if we do pull back here, we hold that 50 SMA support as well as this old resistance as a new support. I think that'll open up a good opportunity and a good buying point for UWT, which does seem a bit overextended right now. Not extremely overextended, but it, it is a bit overextended here with the pullback in crude oil, bringing back UWT to the $15, $15, dollars range. That'll be a good entry point in terms of UWT. And that is what I'm personally watching for this ETF here. So that's what I'm watching there, guys. Another one that you guys called out today was AKS. Let's take a look at this one. Yeah, I briefly looked at this one before. And this one, guys, just like MO, this is a very uh, you know uh, similar pattern to MO. We saw the big sell-off. Now we're seeing the start of the break out of the resistances, right? Just like MO here where we're breaking out of the uh, moving average resistances, we're seeing that as well in AKS, right? The resistance here is the 50 SMA. We see the bottom here, very good sign. The higher low here, which is a good sign that we're reversing and ultimately the break above this 180 SMA with the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA. These are very good signs that we're reversing to the upside. So guys, just keep an eye on this higher high, higher low pattern and the fact that we're holding this 50 SMA here as a support and we do notice a resistance at around let's say 325 this one, if it does end up slowly closing this gap, this could be a good gap fill trade up to here, and it could break out if we do end up breaking $3.25 as a resistance. So this is a pretty good 
reversal pattern stock here and uh watch that break on their resistance guys that can be a very very good move right there in terms of uh aks so a couple more that you guys wanted me to talk about and i see value in uh what what was it i think jnug was one of them jnug jnug right now is honestly looking like um it's kind of sketchy right now in my personal opinion right we can see that the level where i would personally like to see jnug get to before taking a position would be around this level right here at about 1155 1175-ish, right? Because over the past couple of weeks, we can see that JNUG, every time that it pushed to a higher high, it pulled back to that previous resistance and held that support level. Well, it really, it really only did that about one time here, actually twice, because we can see it did it here as well. It pushed up above this old resistance, right? It pushed up and then it held it as a new support. You can see that here at 835 old resistance at about eight dollars roughly the same area we can see it popped up above here broke that resistance held it as a new support and now i want to see if it does the same exact thing right we broke the resistance and are we going to pull back and hold it as a new support that is what I'm looking for with an entry point at around $11.75, maybe $12 even, depending on how gold does. For those of you guys that don't know, very simple. When gold's going up in price, JNUG is going up in price as well. So just keep an eye on gold here, guys. If we're pulling back, that means JNUG's pulling back, opening up a better opportunity for a more margin of profit in that particular ETF. So another couple that you guys wanted me to talk about and I honestly talked about this one in the previous video was UGAS, guys. UGAS, very simple. It's a natural gas-based ETF. We all know this by now, especially all you guys out there that do follow this channel regularly. And we see a pretty good pattern here on a technical basis that you guys found a double bottom, right? Very good sign for a reversal. We broke above the 50 SMA, the 180 SMA with the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA, showing a pretty bullish sign here. So what are we going to wait and see? Well, if you guys breaks about $31, $32, it could potentially run back up to $36 here on a technical basis. And of course, we know that slash NG, whenever slash NG is going up in price, that's when UGAS is going up in price. So I'm keeping an eye out for the 270 resistance here, guys. If we do successfully break above that, this one could end up running to the next spot on a technical basis at around $2.90. So I'm watching out for those guys very, very closely. And another one that we talked about um, in, in the last video, I believe, or was it on Friday's video or Thursday's video? I forget, but this is one that I actually missed out on. Why, why, ticker symbol, why, why? I missed out on this one, guys. I believe it was up, we can see it was up around 3%. On this past trading day, but guys, it's still looking attractive for this one reason. If we do end up breaking this 74, 73, 50-ish resistance, this one could end up being a runner up to the previous resistance <clears throat> from a couple of months back at around 79 to 80 dollars. So I'm keeping an eye here, and I'm actually going to set an alert uh, for it to actually. Uh, alert me at about $74 to see if it's pushing up and slowly starting to fill the gap up to about $80. So Mark is at or above, I'm going to say, let's say $74.50 because I do want to be alerted when it's honestly popping above here pretty strongly. <coughs> and uh, I think $74.50 would be a good spot as of right now to set that alert. So another one that you guys shouted me out was ticker symbol HZNP. And very simple, guys. This one pulled back from $24 to $21 successfully as of right now, holding that 180 SMA support here on this 180-day, 4-hour chart. So if we do end up holding this, heading into tomorrow, and we slowly start to push up into, let's say, the $22 range, this one can slowly be heading back up to around $24, which would be the target sell point on this one, in my opinion, if I were to get in at around 20 
$2. So this one's a pretty good call out. You know, the margin is there from where we pulled back to about 10% here. Now all we want to wait for is that reversal to the upside 100% confirmed by simply just climbing into the $21.50 to $22 range. Because as of right now, guys, we're simply just consolidating on one or two trading days here, really just one day. And we want to see more push to the upside for that full on confirmation. So I'm going to set an alert here at about $21, let's say 75 cents. So I get alerted when we're really just pushing up in price, creating that higher, high, higher, low staircase pattern, opening up more value um, in my personal opinion. So another one that I want to talk about today is CGC, yet again, another marijuana company, Canopy Growth Company. You all probably know this if you're you know, into marijuana stocks, just like Cron. This is probably the second, if not the number one most popular one out there in the stock market. And based off this 184-hour chart, guys, Cron, or not Cron, CGC is facing some serious resistances right here, right? We can see the EMA, the 50 SMA. These are areas of resistance that have been extremely valid over the past one, two, three, four, even five trading days. So for us to honestly slowly fill the gap back up to $51 in CGC, we need to, need to, need to see that break above these resistances into that $45, $46 price point range in my personal opinion, right? And for those of you guys that can see these red trend lines here, we noticed that we didn't actually successfully hold this old resistance at around $45 as a new support. So what is that telling me? Well, that's telling me that we could be headed to this next support at around $42.75 to $43 in terms of CGC. So let's say tomorrow we sell off even more in terms of CGC. I'm going to be waiting for the hold on $42.00 to see if we're going to pop up there and slowly break those, uh, you know, moving average resistances to get back to the next resistance, which at that point would be about $45. So from here, guys, let's say we do pull back to about $43 up to the next resistance at about 45. That's going to offer about a five, six percent margin. But let's say tomorrow we end up opening green. Let's say we're up about a couple percentage points on here. That's going to be pushing us above this old resistance again, making it a new support with the goal filling the gap up to about $51 from this area right here. So I'm watching guys closely. Are we going to break these resistances to the upside and fill the gap from 45 to 60? Or not 60, 51? Or are we going to pull back more hold 4250 and slowly fill the gap back up to 45 or even break 42 which at that point if we break it to the downside I'm not really going to be looking to trade CGC whatsoever to be completely honest with you all so I think I covered every stock that I wanted to talk about um, in this video and I did get to cover some that you guys wanted me to talk about as well so if you did enjoy this video Feel free to hit that like button and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys are watching. I would love to know. Also, subscribe if you're new. Hit that notification bell so you're notified every time that I do make a video. And please, guys, please do your own research. Do not trade these based off of my opinion. That is not how you're going to become a successful trader and investor over time. Do your own research. Do the work. Understand what you're trading. And that will lead to your um, success. Well, not guaranteed success, right? It'll lead you to make your own decisions, which you have higher likelihood of reaching success if you are making your own logical decisions based off of your own opinion. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Have a great rest of your weekend. Peace out.